and happy Friday. Welcome back to another episode of Find My Past Fridays Live, which is our weekly show about all things family history and all things interesting to family historians. As usual, it's me, Alex Cox, your host, and I'm joined off camera by Max Anderton. Say hello, Max. Hello, Max. Well, Max is actually showing incredible dedication to the cause today because he did himself a mischief, mischief the other day, didn't you, Max? I did. Don't bring it back. The, the, the trauma. <laughs> Well, he, 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 I saw, when I saw him come into the office this morning, he was, he's genuinely limping quite severely. And you fell off your bike, didn't you, Max? Because you didn't want to let all the lovely people down. You've dragged your, your, your wounded leg into work. That's right. And also, it's not just us two today. It's not. No, no, no. It, this week is our DNA special. So I'm sure, for those of you who tuned in last week, we were very excited to announce the launch of Find My Past DNA, our brand new DNA discovery experience in partnership with our good friends over at Living DNA. And while we're not joined here in person, we are joined in the comments by Hannah, one of the co-founders, along with, her, with David Nicholson. So you've got one of the actual co-founders of Living DNA here to answer any questions you may have. Because while I know, well, I, like, I like to think I know a decent amount about family history and records, I'm still learning when it comes to DNA. Uh, and Hannah is actually joined by Kel Katie, who is the uh, senior product manager um, over at Living DNA. And, Get all your questions in. Get them in. But they're going to be trying their hardest to answer the questions in the comments. I'm going to pass over a will try and answer some of them. I'll more, try. I'll try. More my simple best. ones. But if you have got a really complex, long question, still comment with it because yes, we are looking to do a long form webinar next month and we will get take those questions in and get them answered in that format where we've got the time to be able to really delve into it. Yeah, this is basically just the beginning of, 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 of us inundating you with, with DNA news, facts, and, and, and fun, I like to think as well. Um, so, yeah. But, I was just going to say nice. just before you get started, just hello to everyone. Hello, hello to, yes, hello, uh, that is why we're here. Annabelle Cartledge Baxter, hello to uh, Nicole Hassel. Hello. Uh, from a grey Bilston. Oh. Um, hello to Rosie Walters and, and, and everyone else. Leslie Norris, just seeing you pop in as well. Hello, Leslie. Hi. Yeah, it's, it's getting very grey and wintry in the UK at the moment. Yesterday was one of the winterest day, win, most wintry days I think we've had yet. But anyway, back to DNA. So if anyone uh, missed last week's, and I mean... If, if, if I'm sure you, you, you follow Find My Past on Facebook, so you probably would have had to have been living under a rock to have missed the news. Um, but yes, last week we announced our brand new DNA testing service with our partners, Living DNA. And the reason we're really, really excited about this is that Living DNA's, Living DNA's kits provide a level of detail that you just, you just will not find anywhere else with another DNA test. So as well as providing you with regional breakdowns across 80 regions across the world, Living DNA's kits are also able to, to, to narrow, hone in on your regional genetics in the British, British, across the British Isles, basically. So if you take a Living DNA test, well, or find my past DNA test, you will find out which percentage of your genes come from, say, Yorkshire or Lancashire or Essex or, or any, any part of the UK. Uh, and then when you combine that with all our lovely records, our 9 billion records, you've got this amazing combination of, of Living DNA's cutting edge science and our you know, world class British and Irish records and the two combined are just such a powerful combination. We're hoping as well for people just starting out, this is going to be such a, an, a new and exciting way to, for, for people who've never looked into their family history before to start start uncovering these stories and connect with records. So we are very, very, very excited. And as you, you, you know us very well now, uh, we, we've got Living DNA have kindly provided us with two videos, which we'll be playing today, just to kind of introduce you to them and uh, let, let us show you how, how great they are and how glad we are to have partnered with them. But of course, why are we so excited about um, DNA today? Well, of course, because it's Black Friday. Deal time. Hey. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've been trying my best not to not to go wild, <laughs> not to get in any fights. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, with my spending, but no, that, that too, Max. Of course, um, and of course, as it's Black Friday, we are having a big Black Friday DNA sale. So these lovely kits, which have only been available for about a week, uh, we've already dropped the price for the Black Friday weekend. So you'll be able to get these at the lowest price you'll ever get them at. The price will vary depending on which region you're, you're buying them from, because I know we've got viewers in the UK, we've got a good amount of viewers in the US, people who are dedicated... Don't forget our... Oh, that's what I was you were about say, to say, sorry. The, 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 the ones who I'm most grateful for, to tuning in at what, whatever time Two it must in be morning, in the morning. Our Australian viewers, you guys are amazing. Um, so yeah, the prices differ, but if you go to our DNA page, or if you just go to the Find My Past homepage, there's, it's very easy to find, and you'll get more information about the Black Friday deals, but now is the 
time to pick up a kit and they truly are fantastic and if any once people start taking these kits we'd love you to start sending in your experiences and letting us know what you think about them and how you've been finding it it's yeah it's a big 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 step forward for Found My Past and we're really really excited now to to finally be in the DNA sphere. By the way, I just want to say a very special hello to Sharon Simmons. Uh, hi from Melbourne, Australia. Wow, hi Sharon. Well. Hello. Wow. That is, what, time, what time is it in Melbourne? It's 2.50 a.m. What? Wow. <laughs> it's I'm, already I'm, Saturday. I'd say why aren't you in bed, but of course you wouldn't want to miss this, would you? Um, you've forgotten something very important, by the way. But just before we do <gasps> oh, introduce that video, people can win. People can win this actual kit, the one I'm holding in my hands now. And if, if, if like William Shaw, you'd like us to sign it. We'll do it. <laughs> um, but yes, all you need to do to be in uh, with the chance to win this kit is, is comment. You know, this is such a cool prize. We want to give everybody a good chance to win it. So all you need to do is engage with this week's video, pop a comment in. It could be a question. It could just, all those of you who've just said hello have already entered. So um, it could be, just get a comment in and then next, Next week, we will do a bit of a raffle. We'll note all your names down. We need to buy a raffle machine, actually, Max. Don't no, a tombola machine. Tombola yeah, machine, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a name will be picked at random, and you will be sent this very kit. So before I start um, waffling on about why DNA is so amazing, do you think, I think it's time that I hand over to Hannah. And That's right, can. yeah. So um, in her first video, Hannah is going to be talking about relationships and why relationships were so important to the founding of Living DNA and, 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 and why they're so important to, to the company as a whole. So take it away, Hannah. Relationships are basically the foundation of living DNA. So what I mean by that is, is that it wouldn't have been possible to get this product off the ground if it weren't for the relationships that we have with all the different people who work on, on the project. There are some core relationships such as our, our lab partners who just go above and beyond to supporting us deliver what, what we can deliver. Um, there are some of the key academics and scientists who will have been putting hours and hours into this because they believe in it. And you don't get to that stage where people are really passionate about it and really all feel the, the same purpose unless you build the relationships first. And so that's exactly what I've been able to to be part of every every day as I've worked on this, which just makes it so much more than, than just an ancestry test. You know, sure the test is the end result, but we we walk away with these amazing connections and relationships with, with people who we didn't have before. And you know, working together has just shown that no matter what you know what your field is, it's possible to all just work together. And that for me has, has been probably the, the most um, enjoyable part of, of this whole experience. Thank you very much for that, Hannah, and thank you to Hannah and Katie who are already answering questions, I believe. I think that's all. That's right, yeah. It's we're getting so loads many in. questions coming in. So thank you for sending your questions. And don't forget, all those of you who are sending in questions have already entered the raffle to win this kit. So if anyone missed the section I did before that video, anyone who comments on this week's video will be, ent will be automatically entering themselves into a raffle to win one of our lovely co-branded Far My Past and Living DNA kits. I, I had a quick peek at the questions. Um, that came through while the video was playing and one of the ones I think Hannah might actually already be answering it but it was a very good question it was well it was more of a warning I guess uh, one of our viewers flagged that uh, they, they believed DNA to be dangerous and it's not something you should share well that is something you I, I, I want to put your minds at ease that is certainly not the case your data is a hundred percent safe and protected it will not be used for anything else other than finding out about your ancestry. That is the only thing it will be used for. Living DNA are literally top of the list when it comes to data security and data protection. They're, they're in accordance with all the most up-to-date data protection laws that have been passed this year. Um, 
I think it is probably safe to say that you're, it, could, there's no, it wouldn't be safer with anyone else. I mean, it's also actually one of the reasons why we've chosen to partner with a British yes. company, because as both British companies, we're both adhering to the same strict data protection laws. Totally, yes. Yeah. So please don't let that concern you. Your DNA, your genetic data is very safe and will not be used for anything nefarious at all. Only about making discoveries and connecting you to all our lovely records. <coughs> so yeah, I, I was going to say, what a fantastic seg. All our lovely records. Actually, yes, of course. <laughs> it, it is Friday, which also means records. And of course, as I said before, one of the things that's so great about this new um, DNA service is that it is the combination of records and DNA. So when you get your, reg your, you know, your regional breakdowns mapped, then that you'll, it, it's a great indicator of where you should be looking in, in, in the record collections and of course records is still what we do we still release records every Friday and we will not stop and this week is no different we've had some rather we've had some very very interesting sets added this week and while I'm while I'm while I'm telling you about this week's new records keep your questions coming in for Hannah and Katie um, and yeah or if you don't have any questions just say hello and then you'll be in with a prize to win a kit I've got to say, I've got massive respect for them. Very, very fast fingers. They're responding to questions very quickly. <laughs> Absolute champions. Thank you, guys. Um, oh, and actually, one of the things I did want to say about Living DNA before, which I hadn't quite realised until um, I hung out a bit with David, was that um, it's the how many amazing minds were actually involved in getting it off the ground. So it's a collaboration between like, over 100 world leading scientists, academic researchers, geneticists, people from all over the globe. So, you know, the expertise is definitely there. And I think that probably came across in the video that we just played. But anyway, back to records. What do we have this week? Well, one of the things I wanted to say at the start, and I've forgotten about, is I wanted to wish all our American viewers a very, very happy belated Thanksgiving. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the holidays. I'm hoping you're using it as a good opportunity to get some family history research done. If you're all meeting up with your relatives for Thanksgiving dinner, well, you, you will have already done that. Uh, but if you're spending time with family over the holidays, remember this is a great time to start quizzing older members of the family about ancestors and comparing notes and start collaborating on a family tree. It's a great opportunity. Um, and with that in mind, our most exciting record set this week is from the United States. It's Pennsylvania Cemetery and Burial 1700 to 1950 and it's a big collection over a hundred thousand records covering a hundred parishes throughout Pennsylvania and obviously Pennsylvania is a fascinating state it's got you know it, 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 an amazing, one of the original colonies it's got fascinating history and that is reflected in the burial records so uh, it covers a few you know no, quite well-known cemeteries like Abington, um, McKeesport, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh uh, you know it covers a variety of different denominations you know you don't you've got Baptists, Catholics, Evangelists, you've got Mennonites, you've even got Mennonites in there, Quakers, Presbyterians they're all in there and I'm sure I don't need to explain to you why cemetery and burial records are so useful for family historians. You guys already know that. Um, but in the spirit of Thanksgiving, we did a little bit of digging and wanted to see if we could find any uh, notable American dignitaries um, in these records, and we did. Uh, none other than Ben Franklin himself, Benjamin Franklin, that's right, you know, one of the most famous American patriots, also, uh, you know, a very well-read author. He wrote the Poor, um, Poor Richard's Almanac, which is brilliant and everyone should read. Uh, and also, he gifted the world with some fantastic inventions. The, the Franklin stove, the rocking chair. I, I actually, I, I'm ashamed to admit, I didn't know Benjamin Franklin invented the rocking chair. I knew that. Did you? Yeah. I didn't. Bi bifocals, swim, <laughs> swim fins, and even the urinary catheter. Thank you, Benjamin Franklin. But yes, his, monument, his monumental inscription is actually listed in the records, and I just wanted to read it to you because I thought it was quite cool. It describes his character and celebrates his influence. So on his gravestone, it says, next to the tomb of Washington, this grave has probably more general interest than any in the country. The great Benjamin Franklin rests here, side by side with the partner of his life. The plain stone that covers their resting place reflects his character better than any epitaph, and the simple inscription affords abundant scope for meditation. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yes, happy Thanksgiving to our American viewers. Have fun exploring the Pennsylvania records. There's a lot of them, and there's some really, I think we've got some um, 
famous Civil War generals in there as well. There's quite a few notable uh, American citizens in there. And the, the, the collections for interesting famous people don't stop there. So the next one we've got is the in, in England and Wales Ecclesiastical Dignitaries 1800 to 1840. I know that's quite a mouthful, but I prefer its original name, and I think we should have gone with this in the title. It was, it's actually called the Index Ecclesiasticus. Uh, and basically, it's an alphabetical list of all ecclesiastical dignitaries in England and Wales since the Reformation. So if you're interested in you know, the history of religion in the British Isles or the history of the Church of England, this is a fantastic record set to start exploring. But the next set is even more interesting. So this is Britain Directory of National Biography, 1885 to 1904. And this is 40 volumes, essentially a complete run of the British Dictionary of National Biography from those dates. And, you know, you might, your ancestors might be in there. You're lucky if you've got an ancestor who made it into this book. And if they are in there, you'll find tons of information about them. And it's not just British, it's Irish, Irish dignitaries as well. Because, of course, back then, Ireland was still part of the British Empire. Um, and you'll find, as you can imagine, you're going to find loads and loads of famous people in here. Just to name a few, you've got biographies for William Shakespeare, Horatio, Horatio Nelson, Darwin, Christopher Wren. Ren, sorry. You'll also find people for like, you know, as you'll still find biographies for lesser known figures, people who are famous in their day, but whose legacy hasn't quite carried down through the ages to quite the same extent as the likes of Shakespeare or Nelson. So that, you know, you've got people like Ignatius Brown, I had actually heard of him, but I'm a history nerd, um, who was uh, an authority on the floor of 18th century Yorkshire. And also, you know, you got, as I said before, you've got Irish Nate. Oh, sorry, no, I've got. I've got that really wrong. Ignatius Brown is the 17th century Irish writer. That's why I'd heard of him. As of all Irish names. Uh, the Samuel Halliston of Hock, uh, was the Yorkshire expert on flora and fauna. I really messed that up. Uh, but that's not all. We've got um, a Sc Scotland Rolls of Honour, 1914 to 1920. So our military releases are still coming. So if you're still um, enjoying military research off the back of Remembrance Day, and you've got Scottish ancestors who gave their lives in the Great War, this is a great record set to find them in. 7,000 names. You'll find loads about them, their employment history, parishes where they grew up, dates of birth, you know, service, facts about their service. It's very, very interesting. Last but not least, we've added loads more records to our collection of London, Docklands and East End baptisms. Great if you've got East End ancestors. The East End of London has a very, very interesting history. Quite a dark one at times as well. Um, and then we've also added over 140 new pages to seven existing titles in our newspaper archive. And same as, as with every week, if you want to know more about the releases and you don't receive our weekly Find My Past Friday emails, if you don't, you should, because they're packed with loads of useful information. It's not just about records, it's about all kinds of things that are going on behind the scenes. You know, so they'll feature announcements about DNA, links to old webinars or webinars we've got coming up, or masterclasses as we call them now. So yeah, you do want to get those Friday emails, but if you don't, all this uh, information is available in a bit more detail on the latest records se section of our blog and Max will pop a link in, which I think he will be doing now. Yeah, a little bit slow on the uptake on this week. Uh, it's been distracted by all the comments coming in. But well, it's great we've got loads it. coming in. It looks like people are keen to win a kit, are they, Max? Uh, well, that, I think they're also just keen to find out about DNA. It's, it's such a, it is a very exciting announcement. Well, it's just such a fascinating topic, isn't it, with just so much possibility. Um, on that note, shall we maybe show yeah, the... it's definitely time to show the second video courtesy of uh, Hannah and the lovely people at Living DNA, and this one will be explaining how your results are delivered to you and why Living DNA tests are, give, can, are unique in the amount of detail they can provide. So, take it away again, Hannah. When you get your results, you get a lot of information. So we're able to show you things such as your breakdown and also if you are specifically from the UK or have UK ancestry, then we can show you where in the UK you come from. So that's why we've built an, an online result portal, if you like, where people can log in and, and view their results and start to see visually what those results mean. All of that information is so key and so fascinating but you've got to show it in a way that people engage with it and love it and you know that was a joy to work on because we could really bring all that vibrancy through chuck out the excel graphs and bring in something that's quite playful so when you get your results you'll get 
what your DNA looks like today and the breakdown today, but then you've also got the ability to, to see what your DNA looked like at different points in history. Hello again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And another reminder to people just tuning in that all you need to do to enter into a raffle to win one of our lovely new co-branded Living DNA and Find My Past kits is to comment. And uh, um, we've already had loads of questions in. If you don't have a question, you're like, what can I comment? What I'm talking about next might give you some food for thought. So of course, we're keen to get the word out there that um, these kits are now available and that they're amazing. So yesterday, uh, David Nicholson, the other co-founder of Living DNA, and I spent all day in a recording studio giving radio interviews to loads of different radio stations around the UK. And this was off the back of a survey we conducted. And of course, as these kits, the unique thing about them is all about uncovering your regional identity within the British Isles. We wanted to find out what people already thought about regional identity, so we conducted a survey. Let's just say the uh, results were quite surprising, if not maybe a little controversial. So I'm going to talk through some of those now, but it was all about regional pride and you know, national identity. So I'd like to ask you guys, if you can't think what to comment about, and it's something people like to share anyway, what makes you proud to be from the region you are from? Why are you proud to be from there? You know, I'm, I'm from the Wirral. I, I love the Wirral. I'm probably, I, I, I like to think I'm, I, I guess the main reason I'm proud to be from there is because it's such a beautiful part of the world. You're surrounded by water on three sides. I love growing up by the coast. You've got fantastic views. And also it's a very close-knit place where people, everyone knows each other and people really do look out for each other. But why are you proud to be where you're from? Let us know where you're from and let us know what you love about that place. You're, what, what do you love about being from Portsmouth, Max? From Portsmouth? Probably the colourful language, <laughs> shall we <laughs> you say. Actually, you have told me Portsmouth has some amazing slang, doesn't really it? Really good slang, yeah. And stuff that when I uh, went to university, um, I went to university at Sussex or in Brighton, not even that far away, but a lot of the things that I was saying just got met with very blank stares. <laughs> and I soon had to adopt the, the cool London slang because that's what everyone was using there. Sick. But well, no, that's, regional yeah. identity is such an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I was, I mean, in, in the uh, interviews we were talking about yesterday, I, I said to people, you know, I'm from this neck of the woods, and people say, you don't sound like you are. And I've lived in London for about 10 years now, and unintentionally my accent has just gradually kind of eased off. I don't know why. Unintentionally. No, but, you spent hours walking along with a, with a book on your head, <laughs> reciting... Uh, 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 How now, brown cow? That's right, yeah. <laughs> uh, Rosie Walter says she's proud to be Welsh as we have dragons. Mm, I think that's debatable, Rosie. Well, I'd say, and there's tons of reasons to be proud to be Welsh, actually. <laughs> I, 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 I'm hoping my middle name sounds Welsh and I'm convinced I've got some Welsh in my family tree and I'd love to find it. Um, and, and actually, I believe the Welsh have some of the most unique DNA in the British Isles, according to a study that was conducted recently. It must be those, those Celtic roots. Um, but yeah, so the survey we conducted, let's just say some of the results were a little controversial. So one of the first questions we asked about, you know, was wh where, how <coughs> proud did fee people feel to be British? And one of the things we were a little bit disappointed to discover was it, it seems that British pride may be slightly lower than it was a few years ago and I'm guessing that's got to be down to recent media coverage. You know, it's, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're getting bashed as a nation a bit in the press at the moment and I think it's an uncertain time for the country as a whole so maybe this could be part of it. But while British pride was a little lower than it was um, five years ago, so 24% of people polled said they were less proud now than they were five years ago, pretty much everybody was proud to be from their home region. 90%, well, 87% of the people we surveyed said, well, I might not be, a hunt, like, I might be a bit more confused about British pride, I'm very confident in my regional pride. And um, people said there were loads of different reasons for that. It was things to do with, you know, they, they loved the history of the region. One that, uh, one that came very highly was, you know, it's a friendly place, the locals are kind and friendly, they help each other out. Sense of humour was another thing that ranked highly. Accents also high, ranked highly, but they also ranked, interestingly enough, Accents ranked highly as reasons people would like to be from a given county, but they also ranked highly as reasons people would not like to be from a given county. Um, and I'm, you can probably guess which region came top in the proudest region in the UK. I have no idea. I mean, the nickname they gave their own county is, is quite a proud one. The pride of... Oh, you're making me look silly now, are you? Yorkshire, God's own county. Oh, right, sure. yeah, yeah, okay. It's God's own, yeah, Yorkshire ranked top. 
And uh, close behind was their arch rivals, Lancashire. So uh, it's amazing that you know the, the the War of the Roses was hundreds and hundreds of years ago, but it, that you know that Lancastrian Yorkist pride <laughs> still going strong. Uh, and some regions, I must admit, didn't do too well. So. Um, Essex, Bristol and Kent, I'm sad to admit, didn't do fantastically well on the pride scale. That's funny. I'd have thought definitely with the um, the only way is Essex. Oh, I suppose that's probably going to divide people, it's, isn't it? Some people will be proud of that. I was going to say people, people are going to then go, oh god, this is what people think that we are. But I know definitely a lot of young people go over Essex. Be like, well, we're on the map. Everyone knows about well, us. Well, the other reason that, that particularly well, and Bristol's Bristol's one of my favourite cities, but Kent and Essex especially, those two counties have such amazing history and genetic history as well. Mm. If you think they were both part of Wessex, like one of the last kingdoms to stand up to the Vikings, the men of Kent were like a known fighting force in the early Middle Ages. They've got you know, Canterbury, religious centre of the British Isles. They really cool history. So it's a sad that people um, you know, weren't as proud as being from those regions as they probably wouldn't have been. And people also admitted um, to disguising where they're from quite regularly. You know, pretending they were from oh, somewhere like, else. Oh, like you, changing lying. your accent. Yeah, like me, changing my <laughs> accent. That's what my friends say when I go back home. And then after about three days of being there, I'm like, I like meat. Comes back straight away. <laughs> <laughs> but reasons for that were things like, you know, dishonest bunch. Uh, you know, get, get discounts and takeaways. Quite a surprising one. Uh, to sound more interesting on a date was another one. Uh, to get jobs, and my favourite one was to disguise beauty re re dis disguise beauty regimes. I don't want to be public, like tanning. You know, I, what county would you come from? No, I mean, you know, being like, oh, my, my nan was Italian. Oh, right, right, okay. I thought you meant, you know, oh, I'll lie that I'm from uh, Hampshire because they get a little bit more sun than you are not. But yeah, so I mean, it was, we, I think we posted a blog about this if you want to learn more about the survey in detail. It's definitely an interesting conversation, you know, it's, 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 it's an interesting starting point for a conversation. You may not you may not agree with everything that's in here, but it's certainly, it's certainly interesting. And let's just say the interviews I gave with, with BBC Radio Kent and BBC Radio Essex, I was a little bit nervous about uh, beforehand. <laughs> um, if any of you did catch those interviews, we'd love to hear what you thought. We had a great time giving them. I might actually um, round up all the on-demand links for them and put them oh, in the yeah, post or something, or, or yeah. just share them on Facebook tomorrow. And I do, th I must admit, I think David and I made quite a team, so I'm looking forward to getting him on here and us doing it together live. Should I be jealous? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think that's uh, that is probably it for me this week, which brings us night. I mean, unless we've got any questions or comments, you I mean, answering live. Uh, the the ladies over at Lumi DNA have been doing such fantastic. Yes, I want to say a massive questions. thanks to both Hannah and uh, Katie for for taking the time out their busy days. You know, it's a busy time for both of our companies at the moment, and for coming and answering all these questions. I haven't seen it happen, but according to Max, it's been they've been thick. The answers have been coming through thick and far. So massive thanks, guys, and thank you for being our partners. Um, and again, don't don't forget, you've still got maybe a minute to get your comments in if you want to win Yeah, the comments generally are live for a few minutes afterwards. Actually, uh, yeah, they are, aren't they? Oh, uh, uh, Living DNA say thank you for having us, Alex. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, and, and also, like I said, if you do have, if you're watching this um, not live, or also, and, and you think, you know what? Actually, I've got a question I want to ask. Post it in here, and we will be doing a longer form yes, we definitely will. Uh, webinar at some point in December, and that's a chance for us to get really in depth with your specific questions yes. around DNA. Because I'm, I'm still, I'm looking forward to doing it. Because as I said, I'm still learning all about this, so I'm looking forward to, you know, upping my knowledge and doing a, a more in-depth look at all this. But yeah, so thanks for everyone who's tuned in. Thanks to everyone who's commented. You could be in with a chance to win this. Um, uh, and also, just before we go, I'm just gonna. I'm also posting a blog post in, in the comments, which is by uh, Blaine Bettinger. He's oh, actually, Blaine, yes. He's like actually one of the world's leading genetic genealogists, and he's written this article. It's all about why DNA tests are so good for family history. So it's oh, actually, I wanted to leave them with one final stat before I go. Okay, one also, final stat. No, 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 no. And this is a call to action. This is a call to action. So one of the, the one of the other disheartening facts that came out of the survey. Uh, was how disconnected we are with our roots as a nation. So I was really surprised by this. Over one in ten people can't. Oh, I mean, twelve. So that yeah, twelve percent. But twelve percent is still significant. So over one in ten people can't trace their family tree back past their parents. Quite surprising. But even more surprising, two thirds of people could not trace their family tree beyond their grandparents. So that's two thirds of people who could not give you the names of their great grandparents. That's something I aim to fix, and I hope you can help me. So that you know, 
get onto your family and friends, get them to start their family history. It's a rewarding thing to do. I think it, you know, you, you get a better idea of who you are as a person and, and you know, your family's place in history in the world. I mean, maybe share this video with them. This might inspire them. But yeah, I'm going to leave that, that, that parting uh, fact with you that, you know, two thirds of people can't trace their family tree past their grandparents, which I think is very sad. So if you know one of these people, help them get started and get them digging around in records and, and taking a DNA test. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. And also, thanks to Living DNA. Oh, and again, massive thanks to, to the folks at Living DNA for, for everything. Cool. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Lovely weekend. Bye.